find out how you can get into the Christmas spirit. Plus, Trojan Dining Services help the needy. Stay tuned. Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. From the High Definition Digital Production Center on the Troy campus, with news from Troy University locations around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News for November 28, 2011. I'm Judson Garner. And I am Rachel Ellis. Thank you for joining us this evening. Well, the people responsible for feeding Troy University students are spending the next two days encouraging those students to help feed the needy. Tiffany Lester gives us the details about a food drive planned by Sodexo Dining Services. Troy University's Dining Service Sodexo is encouraging faculty and students to bring in their canned goods for an event to help the nearly 50 million people that are affected by hunger every day. It's called Helping uh, Hands Across America, and uh, with hunger being an issue year-round, um, sh really we should be conducting it all many times during the year, but um, we're hoping to, during the holidays, gather some uh, non-perishable items and help the local communities around. We're asking faculty, staff, students, all student organizations, we've urged them to make it, you know, kind of like a, a, a mandatory thing for their students to bring in um, some canned foods. Nangia says that the holidays tend to bring out the spirit of giving in most people and that coming together as a university can make an impact on those communities that are in need this time of year. I think that you start to feel a little bit more during the holidays, um, you know, the lack of and, um, you know, if we can do just even a little bit to improve that, to help that, I think that we would, you know, we would have you know, attained our goal. While Sodexo doesn't have a specific goal for the food drive this year, they ask that all student organizations bring whatever they can to help the cause. And they're offering the organization that brings in the most non-perishable food items, something most college students can't turn down, a free meal. I know it's gotten better and better because we've involved all the organizations, kind of made it a competition with the pizza party for those who collect the most. So that, that's, we're offering that again this year, hopefully, to make, you know, our goal. Tiffany Lester, Troy Trojan Vision News. The drive will take place over the next two days from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and the drop-off location will be set up next to the Boar's Head Deli in the new dining facility. Many of us are still feeling the effects of our Thanksgiving turkey, but that doesn't mean it isn't time to start thinking about the next big holiday and the city of Troy is doing their part to help get folk, folks in the holiday spirit. The annual, city, the annual City of Troy Christmas Parade is tonight on the square in downtown Troy, and the parade will feature groups and organizations from around the surrounding area, and floats are simply just walking in their best Christmas attire and an appearance by jolly old St. Nick. The city also help, holds their official tree lighting ceremony, ceremony immediately following the parade, which will include a storybook reading by Miss Claus. The parade starts tonight at 6 on the square in downtown Troy and a note to drivers, some of the streets surrounding the square will be closed because of a parade traffic, so plan accordingly. And while the city of Troy is getting people in the Christmas spirit tonight, some Troy University singers are going to add to the holiday mood tomorrow night. Troy University's Concert Chorale will present their Tidings of Joy concert Tuesday night at 7.30 at Park Memorial United Methodist Church. The choir will present a few holiday favorites along with some lesser known works. A all Christmas because, well, just because we don't get a chance very often to do larger work pieces. And we're doing two showcased larger works. Uh, the Sassol Christmas Oratorio that features lots of student soloists and um, we're doing the uh, Ray Farm Williams Fantasy on Christmas Carols. And so two larger works and then we're spreading around little anthems and carols throughout the concert. Once again, the concert will be tomorrow night at 7.30 at Park Memorial United Methodist Church. Admission is free and we will learn more about the concert later in the show during Trojan Talk. And now taking a look at news from around the state, the Bullock County Coroner says three people have died in an apartment fire in Union Springs. Sydney Jernigan confirms the three deaths at the Peachburg Road of Complex. The Alabama State Fire Marshal's office is involved in the investigation. Alabama lawmakers are considering new ways to block people from buying key ingredients used to make methamphetamine. A new electronic database that was launched in January has already blocked the sale of more than 70,000 boxes of cold, me cold medicine with ephedrine and pseudoephedrine, the main ingredients in the drug. 
Top Justice Department lawyers say Alabama's new immigration law could actually hamper immigration enforcement rather than being a crackdown that supporters favor. Two assistant attorney general were in Birmingham today meeting with business groups and community leaders about the law, which the Obama administration is trying to block. Still to come on Trojan Vision Nightly, the Trojan football team is looking for one last win to end the football season. Daniel Percival will give us details on that and more in Trojan Sports. But first, the secret has secretly recorded phone conversation between change charges against the college basketball coach. We'll have more details when we come back. Over the course of time, Troy has consistently turned out quality graduates. We're trying to develop um, future leaders. If it had not been for Troy University, I would have never had the honor of being the Alabama Teacher of the Year. We want to educate the mind to think, the heart to feel, the body to act, and we do that within the framework of one real university. Troy University, in class, online, within reach, troy.edu. From the High Definition Digital Production Studios of Troy University, you're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. Syracuse University says the audio tape that has now surfaced in the sex scandal surrounding Bernie Fine was not provided to the university officials who investigated allegations six years ago. Manuel Gallegas has the latest on the accusations that have forced out the longtime assistant coach. Syracuse University fired assistant basketball coach Bernie Fine after a third allegation of sexual abuse and the discovery of a 10-year-old audio recording. On the tape, Fine's wife acknowledges her husband's alleged sexual abuse while speaking with one of his accusers, Bobby Davis. Bonnie is also in denial. I think that he did the things he did, but he's somehow through his own mental telepathy is a reason out of his mind. Davis accuses Fine of repeatedly molesting him in the coach's home, at Syracuse, and on basketball road trips. Davis was a ball boy for six years. He tried to make me touch him a couple of times, and grab my hand, and then he pull away. During the call, Lori Fine talked about confronting her husband. You know what? Go to a place where there's gay boys. Find yourself a gay boy. Davis also claims he had a sexual relationship with Fine's wife when he was 18. And now there's a third accuser, 23-year-old Zach Tomaselli, says Fine molested him when he was 13. He put his hand down my shorts and began to fondle me. But Tomaselli may have a credibility issue. He faces sexual assault charges in Maine, and his father says he's lying about Fine. Fine denies all the allegations, but he has lost support from the university, where he worked for 36 years, and from head coach Jim Beheim. On Facebook, Beheim said, I deeply regret any statements I made that might have been insensitive to victims of abuse. Fine has not been charged with any crimes. Manuel Gallegas, CBS News. And now Danielle Percival joins us for a look at sports. So Danielle, the Trojan football team was on the road this past weekend, but did not bring home the results we were hoping for. That's right. Not the results that Trojan fans were looking for. They've got another game left on the schedule to maybe turn things around. We've also got some basketball to get into. We've got some right. good news first, so let's get into that. Great. The Trojan men's basketball team was winless on the road, heading into a matchup Saturday in Cedar City, Utah against Southern Utah University. But that road losing streak is no more as Troy won a close one, 80-76. The win ended another streak as the Trojans won their first non-conference game on the road after losing 12 in a row. The team was down by 8 with 13-23 left in the game, but fought back to tie with less than 8 minutes remaining. Will Weathers got a layup, drew a foul, and turned the 3-point play to put the Trojans up for good with 3 minutes to go. Weathers led the team with 20 points, and 3 other Trojans posted double figures as well. Of course, whether the win is by 4 or by 40 doesn't really matter. All that counts is the W in the record book. And Troy will be looking to add another victory on the season tomorrow night as they take on East Tennessee State at home at 7 o'clock. 
And on the women's side, the team traveled outside of the southeast for the first time this season, hitting the road to Maine following Thanksgiving to participate in the Dead River Company Classic. But their luck wasn't much better up north, losing both games in the tournament. The Trojans' first opponent was the University of Maine. Troy was able to pick up 20 points off of Maine turnovers, but still struggled with their own turnovers as they fell 66-53 Friday. The following day, they faced Evansville, where turnovers continued to be a problem for the Trojans as they gave up 22, which accounted for 18 Evansville points. The team lost by 10, 59-49 to put their record at 0-5 on the year. They'll look to post that first win Wednesday night as they travel to Auburn to take on the Tigers at 6 p.m. This season has been a season of firsts for the football team, but they haven't all been good. The first game on Larry Blakeney Field brought the first victory of the season, but they've also had their first five-game losing streak under head coach Larry Blakeney, and Saturday they had another first. First of all, let me say this, they have never, that's with an NEV, like <laughs> ever beaten us. Ever. That is until Saturday. The Trojans fell to Western Kentucky for the first time in school history, 41-18. to The beginning of the game showed promise for the Trojans, holding the Hilltoppers scoreless in the first quarter. But Western Kentucky put up two touchdowns in each of the last three quarters. The Hilltoppers have had nearly a complete 180 from last year and are near the top of the leaderboard in the conference. And for Troy? It just so happens that, that we're, we're in flip stage. You know, we've been on top. Now we're... We're at the bottom edge of it. So I think they're getting better, but at the same time, I think our regression because of some things, you know, hopefully we can't help, you know, injuries and that kind of thing. And injuries have been a concern during the latter half of the season. Norris Davis suffered a season-ending dislocated ankle during the game Saturday. Offensive lineman Kyle Wilborn and quarterback Jamie Hampton are both also out for the season. And Blakeney says injuries have been troublesome for his team this year. We're, we're a pretty uh, beat-up football team. Uh, you know, I, I know where we are in that regard, and we got a lot of folks that are gone, out, uh, and a lot of folks that have missed games and missed practices because of injury, and, and it's just sort of compounded our problems. The Trojans will be looking to end the season on a positive note, but they'll have to do it against conference leader Arkansas State. That game is scheduled for a 3.30 kick Saturday in Jonesboro, Arkansas. So Judson, Rachel, not the result we were hoping for with the football team. They've gotten another chance, so hopefully they can get things back on the right track in the season on a strong That's note. Right. But the men's basketball team picked up a victory out in Utah. Hopefully they can bring that success back home as they play at home tomorrow night. So go out and support the Trojans. That's right. Ending one sport and on to the next. That's right. Always busy. Thank Absolutely. you, Danielle. Still to come on Trojan Vision Nightly News, forget Black Friday. It's Cyber Monday. Find out what deals you could be missing out on. Plus, the rain and clouds have rocked the cold weather, but is it here to stay? Bree Sanders will let us know when she joins us with weather. Be out there. Be out there. Be out there. Be out there. Time was, kids did what came naturally. Spending free time running barefoot through the grass, wading knee-deep in streams, climbing to the tallest branch. But today, American kids are more likely found texting, watching TV, or gazing at a computer screen. They spend more than seven hours in front of electronic media. Something essential has been lost. Childhood's connection to the natural world. That's why National Wildlife Federation created the Be Out There movement. Kids move indoors causes a host of problems, from obesity to ADHD. But outdoor play can go a long way to improving kids' health, body, mind, and spirit. It helps them stay fit, enhances creativity and attention spans, and could even make them better students. Do your part. Be a part of Be Out There. There's a reason why they call it the great outdoors. Learn more at BeOutThere.org. Be Out There! From the high-definition digital production studios of Troy University, you're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. The totals are in from Black Friday, and they show a strong start to the holiday retail season. As Alexis Christophorus reports, that's good medicine for the ailing, ailing economy. More Americans than ever before went shopping this weekend. 226 million, up nearly 7% from last year, according to the National Retail Federation. And even though they're back at work now, consumers are still shopping. They're bargain hunting online. 
There's got to be a new deal all the time to keep customers coming back. And Cyber Monday is just another vehicle for that. Industry trackers say nearly half of the online retailers are offering discounts this Cyber Monday. A third will have free shipping. Many of those deals were available even before today. In fact, 38% of the weekend sales took place on the Internet. Whether online or in the stores, the more Americans shop, the more cash goes into the economy. Wall Street is already celebrating. The stock market posted triple-digit gains, and economists are hoping the Black Friday enthusiasm continues. We really don't know if that's just the desperate consumer trying to get the best purchase price right now, or if it's going to last into the holiday season. Most Americans say they'll split their holiday shopping between the Internet and actual stores. Buying online cuts out the crowds, but consumers like Aaron Rubet say those long lines are part of the experience. I like to be in the stores and I like to see so I like everything immediate. Retailers now have the challenge of keeping consumers excited, so the registers keep ringing straight through to the holidays. Alexis Christophorus, CBS News, Wall Street. More and more babies are getting flatheads from sleeping on their backs. Now the American Academy of Pediatrics is releasing guidelines for the syndrome. Randall Pinkston reports from New York. <laughs> One side of Vincent Antonucci's head is flat, so the four-month-old is wearing a helmet to try to reshape it. I noticed the flattening at the 10-week visit, and I was really concerned. There's been an increase in children with flat head syndrome since doctors recommended infants sleep on their backs to reduce SIDS. Now the American Academy of Pediatrics is out with guidelines to treat and prevent flathead. The AAP says moving the child into different positions or physical therapy on the neck muscles can correct most cases. These deformities do happen. Most of them are benign, which means they will go away on their own. The report says parents should keep babies off their backs as much as possible during the day. They should increase stomach playtime, limit the car seat, swing, or bouncy seat, and turn the child's head each night from left to right in the crib. Doctors say if there's no improvement in six months, that's when parents should see a specialist. But some experts say in severe cases, acting sooner is best. If we know that this child is going to need the helmet anyway because the numbers and the asymmetry is so great, I recommend not waiting because the younger the baby is, the softer the bones are and the faster the bones grow. The Antonucci's tried everything but decided a helmet was the best option for their baby. I think it was so significant, the flattening, that I, I just knew it wasn't going to get better on its own. Vincent will have to wear the helmet for about three months, but after a few weeks, his parents already a see a difference. Randall Pinkston, CBS News, New York. And now Bree Sanders joins us for a look at weather. Now, Bree, it seems like last week everyone was complaining about it being too hot outside, and uh, today it's been really cold. Are these cool, cool temperatures going to continue? Well, it looks like we will have a few consistencies in this cooler weather for the rest of the week, but I'll get more into that in just a moment. Right. Let's take a look at our campus snapshot. Right now on campus, we see that it's mostly cloudy outside, and it's a, um, it's a little damp. So whether you're headed to class or you're headed home from work, you might want to keep that light jacket with you just to stay dry. Taking a look at our current conditions right now, we have mostly cloudy skies, temperatures at 47 degrees, dew points at 37 degrees, humidity is at 67 percent. Barometers at 29.89 inches and steady. Winds are coming in from the west, southwest from 5 to 10 miles per hour. Today's stats, we had a high today of 51. We'll have a low tonight of 34. We had about 0.91 inches of rain. The sun should have risen at 6.24 a.m. and it should have set at 4.40 p.m. Take a look at our temperatures around the state. We see Mobile coming in at 47, Huntsville at 40, as well as Birmingham at 40, Montgomery at 46, Troy at 47, as well as Phoenix City at 47, and Dothan at 50. Let's take a look at our temperatures across the southeast. We see in our area we're experiencing about some mid-40 degree weather, but as we head throughout the rest of the southeast, the temperature trend gets a little bit warmer. The Carolinas experiencing some mid-60s, Florida in the mid-70s, as well as parts of Texas in the mid-70s. Our temperatures across the United States on the West Coast, they're experiencing about some mid 60 degree weather. But as we head into the Midwest, the temperature changes drastically about 20 degrees cooler into the mid to lower 40s. 
current surface map here in the Midwest, we also see those low and high pressure systems here mixing in together, bringing in about some heavy to moderate rain, another reason for their cooler temperatures. A closer look at our area, we see that we have a few moisture systems coming in through our area. Um, we have that cold front that's moving in through the Carolinas, headed into the Atlantic, probably from last night, the rain that we had last night, and we have a few more um, moisture systems here headed throughout Georgia and certain parts of Florida. Our precipitation forecast for the next 48 hours, we see in our area, we should be experiencing about half an inch of rain or so, and we do see northern parts of Montgomery should be experiencing maybe a little bit of snow. Nothing significant, but snow nonetheless. Our departure from normal, we see also in our area, we're about 15 degrees cooler than what we've been experiencing in the past few weeks, so those winter temperatures might be here to stay. As we head into Tuesday, we see, once again, we will have about that 20 to 30 percent chance of rain tomorrow, so you might want to keep that light jacket and that umbrella on you just to stay dry and warm. As we head into Wednesday, we see that rain moves out of our area into the north eastern part of the United States, so we should remain clear as we move into Thursday. Still shouldn't be any possibility of rain, but we do see that rain here in the midwestern part of the states, possibly heading into our way through Friday as it moves into the southern part of the United States, but still shouldn't be any rain in our area. Take a look at tonight's forecast. We have early showers. We have about a 30% chance of rain, 86% humidity, winds coming in from the west, southwest at about 7 miles per hour with a low of 34. For tomorrow's forecast, we have sunny skies, about a 20% chance of rain, strong winds coming in from the west, southwest from 10 to 15 miles per hour with a high of 53. Our class outlook, tomorrow around 7 a.m., it should be about 38 degrees, so you might want to have on a sturdy jacket just to stay warm. At about 10 o'clock, it should be 46, and as we move to 1 o'clock, we should get to our highs at 51 and 50 degrees at 3. Take a look at our four-day forecast. For tomorrow, we see we have a high of 53 with a low of 33. We have that 20% chance of rain, so be on the lookout for that. As we head into Wednesday, we have that high of 57 and that low of 29 and as we head throughout the rest of the week we see that we should be flirting with the mid 60s but with all that sunshine we still don't have too much warm weather to worry about so as you asked earlier looks like those winter temperatures might be here to stay all right well, thanks a lot Bree. you're welcome